Jazz nights are everywhere, aren't they? Doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be sitting on the top of a mountain in West Connemara. There'll always be someone come up to you, push a leaflet into your hand saying, there's a jazz night on tonight down below. And you all say, a jazz night? Oh, great. I love a bit of jazz. I'll definitely be going to that. But you don't go, do you? That'd be taking it too far. Nobody goes to jazz nights. That's not the point of them. If you do go, you'll have people laughing and pointing at you, saying something like, What's Turlock doing here? He knows nothing about jazz. Or, even worse, is that Turlock at a jazz night? That proves he knows nothing about jazz. A lot of jazz nights will try to lure you in with food. There's pizza and jazz nights, steak and jazz nights, all kinds of non-native food combinations. Now, there is a little known loophole here. What you do is you get to the place early, before the band. Order whatever exotic gastronomical item they're trying to bribe you with and sit down nicely. Just as your food arrives, you'll notice the band members coming in with all their gear. But don't panic. They'll be ages setting up. Take your time. Relax. Have another drink. After a few hours, you'll hear a booming, echoey voice saying, One, two, followed by a deafening screech and somebody shouting, Can you hear us out there? This is your cue to slowly get up and leave. On your way out the door, you'll probably be accosted by one of the musicians who says something like, How are you, Turlock? Are you not staying for the bit of jazz? This is where you turn around, look him square in the jaw and say, I live and breathe jazz. I don't need to listen to it. And then walk straight out the door. They hate you anyway. But the great thing about this technique is you're at a jazz night, but at the same time, you're not at a jazz night. It's a bit like a Schrodinger's jazz night attendee type of thing. And there it is, simple as that.